In this video, we're going to have a look at mathematical modelling using quadratics. Uh, it's going to go through one example, uh, which is this. It says, a spear is thrown over level ground from the top of a tower. The height in metres above the ground after t seconds is given by h of t equals 12.25 plus 14.7t minus 4.9t squared where t is greater than or equal to zero. So what that's saying is the height as a function of time is given by this equation, as long as the time is greater than or equal to zero. So part A says to interpret the meaning of the constant term. The constant term, as in the term that doesn't change, is the 12.25, because that doesn't have a t in it. So what does that mean in the context of this problem? Well, the 12.25 has special relevance because what that's referring to is when t is zero. Because when t is zero, that means that this term here will disappear, this term here will disappear, um, and that will just leave the height as being equal to 12.25. So, in the context of this problem, what does that mean when the time is zero? Well, that's when the spear was thrown. So, when the spear was thrown, it was at a height of 12.25. And that is referring to the height of the tower, because it, the spear has been thrown from the top of the tower. So, what this is saying is that the tower is 12.25 meters tall. So the constant term in these quadratic equations refers to the fact that when the variable is zero. And then obviously in this problem that means the height of the tower. Part B, how long does it take for the spear to hit the ground? So for it to hit the ground, the height has to be zero. So this equation here I'm going to make that equation equal to zero. And then if I solve that equation to work out the values of t. So it's a quadratic equation. It's probably not going to factorise with these awkward numbers. So we're going to uh, do the quadratic formula. I can see that a is minus 4.9. I can see that b is 14.7. And I can see that c is 12.25. So if I was to substitute those into the formula, I've got minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 14.7 squared, minus 4 times a, which is minus 4.9, times c, which is 12.25, all divided by 2a, which is 2 times minus 4.9. If you put that into your calculator, you'll obviously get two answers. One of them is minus 0 0.679 to three significant figures. And the other one is 3.68 seconds. Obviously, the negative solution isn't valid in this question because we know that the time has to be greater than zero. So my answer is 3.68 seconds. Part C. After how many seconds is the spear 17 metres above the ground? So when is the height 17 metres? So what I can do now is rather than my equation being equal to zero, it's going to be equal to 17. And again I can do the same process. I can solve this equation using the quadratic formula, once I've made it equal to zero, and work out the times. So what I would want to do, um, make this equation equal to zero, so subtract the 17 away from both sides, and then if I use the quadratic formula, that will give me my answer. So um, I've already worked that out, um, this is a check for you and your fluency with the quadratic formula, but take that away from the 12.25, do the same process as what I've just done there, 
and we will see that the time is either 0.368 seconds or uh, 2.63 uh, seconds, yeah. So actually, we've got two valid, two valid answers here. So the height will be 17 metres at two different times, which kind of makes sense. It's going to be 17 metres on the way up, and it, it's, going to be, uh, it's going to get to 17 metres on the way down as well. Okay. Part D, write h of t in this form. This form should be familiar to you. It's in the completed the square form. So it wants us to complete the square on this. So I'm going to do that down here. So the first thing I want to do, write it in the correct order with the t squared term at the front. Next, factorise that minus 4.9 outside. Uh, 14.7 divided by 4.9, or minus 4.9, is minus 3. So I've just factorised that minus 4.9 out from the t squared and the 14.7. Let's do a quick check. If you multiply this back out, you should get back to the top line. Now we can do the completing the square on what's inside this square bracket. So I would have t minus 3 over 2 squared minus uh, 9 over 4 all squared plus 12.25. If I multiply that back out, I will get minus 4.9 lots of the t minus, uh, I'm just going to turn these into decimals now because the rest of the question is in decimals. Obviously usually we use fractions when we're doing this, but in this question we'll use decimals. Uh, then I've got the minus 4.9 times minus 9 over 4, so that's going to make it a plus. And that's going to give me 11.025. Just multiplying those two numbers together. Do check all of these on your calculator as we're going through. Plus the 12.25 on the end there. Then what I can do is I can collect up these like terms. So on the end here, the 11.025 plus the 12.25, if I add them together, that's going to give me uh, 23.275, I think. 23. Yeah, 23.275. Okay, so I've completed the square. So in the context of this form, A is the 23.275. Minus B is the 4.9. And then I've got t minus 1.5 There we go, I've written it in this form. So when you see something like this, it means complete the square. Okay, part E says to find the maximum height and when that occurs. Well, from part D, this is easy now, I can see that the maximum is 23.275, so max height equals 23.275 metres, and that's going to occur if this is zero, and that's going to be zero when t is 1.5, uh, 1.5 seconds. And finally, comment on the validity. Comment on the validity of the model if t gets large. So after a long period of time, is this is this uh, model still going to be valid? Well, let's think. 
after a long period of time, what's going to be happening to my original equation? This t squared term is going to get larger and larger and larger, and I'm going to be subtracting this large number. Eventually, I'm going to start getting some negative numbers here. In fact, if t is any bigger than 3.68 seconds, I'm going to get negative answers there. And check this for yourself. Substitute for perhaps 4 seconds. Substitute 4 in here and here. You'll get negatives. So, in terms of the validity, as t becomes a large number, this model's not great. Because, obviously, the sphere is not going to be going below ground. Certainly not to, a, certainly not to a, uh, any more than a couple of centimetres. Um, so, really, the, the model it's only really valid up to 3.68 seconds. Then it stops being valid. So perhaps we could improve this model a little bit by rather than saying t is greater than zero, you could say t is greater than or equal to zero, but less than 3.68 seconds, maybe. So you can improve the model a little bit like that, but that would probably give away the answer to that question. Um, just finally on this question, uh, let's just draw a little sketch to show what's actually happening here then. So if we have height and time, we saw that when time was zero, the height was 12.25. And obviously the sphere has been thrown up into the air. We know it gets to its maximum of 23.275 gets to a maximum of 23.275, so if this is the maximum height there, at 1.5 seconds, this is maximum height, then it comes back down, and we know it hits the ground, so when the height is zero, here, at 3.68 seconds. And what we've also worked out is we know the height would be 17 at 0.368 seconds. So about here, the height would be 17 at 0.368. And again over here at 2.63. So this is what our model is looking like for this equation. There we go. So that's how we were able to model a real-life situation using a quadratic equation.